I grew up in the Detroit area, and of course, growing up in the Detroit area, I was a Lions fan. I, I know, the Lions were awful, how could you watch them? And nevertheless, we watched them every week, and at least we had Barry Sanders to keep us entertained. Then about 12 years ago, when my wife and I got married, I, I moved to Minneapolis, and over the next few years, the, the strangest thing happened to me. Something, something in me began to change. So, of, of course, being in Minnesota, it was now the Vikings that were on my TV every week, not the Lions. And I, I didn't like that at first. In fact, it was really hard to even find a Lions game on TV to watch because they were so awful. No one put them on the Sunday or Monday night game. And all I had to look forward to was Thanksgiving that they played at every year. And then the couple times a season they would play the Vikes. Not only did I find myself watching the Vikes every week, but when I was driving my car somewhere and just wanted some mindless entertainment, I would turn on the local sports talk radio station and of course they were talking about the Vikings and then the people that I worked with or went to church with were even talking about the Vikings. Then during that one season Favre came to town and they were actually good found myself enjoying watching them and then I bought tickets to go to a game and suddenly I had this stark realization occur to me when they, they lost in that NFC Championship game to the Saints that year. I, I realized that as I was standing and cheering and, and yelling at the TV like a total idiot during that game, that I was acting the way I used to act when I'd watched the Lions growing up. I had become a Vikings fan. But how did that happen? Remember in the first video how I talked about worship being what we do with the totality of our lives and how the ways we use our time, energy, talents, etc., are, are ultimately the best barometer of our values and what we truly worship. Well, simultaneously, we can also have our values changed. We can have what's truly important to us changed. We can have even who or what we worship changed by the ways we use our time, energy, and talents. Let's call all of these practices, the liturgy or, or worship rhythms of our life, the, the way we use our time, energy, and talents. As the philosopher and theologian James K.A. Smith puts it, you are what you love. That is to say, it should have been no surprise to me that when for three hours a week, nearly every Sunday, for at least four months in a row, I was giving my time and attention to watching Vikings football that I would suddenly start to love watching Vikings football. Based on my sort of liturgical practices of watching them every week and listening on the radio and talking to friends about them, this was the team I loved. Now, had I always loved them? No. But in a certain sense, we could say my my Vikings liturgy changed my love. Now, don't you and I want to have our love changed toward the true, the good, and the beautiful, and ultimately to the source of it, to have our love changed, to love the fountainhead of truth, goodness, and beauty, to love what ultimately satisfies our souls and mends the brokenness in us and the world around us. That too often, we might picture worship as the, the obligation we owe to God, a, a God that seems to have sometimes this glory deficit, at least as some people describe it, that and it feels sometimes like he needs this glory as if he were some medieval king that needs gold being constantly brought to him by his servants. No, to worship and love God, to experience perfect loving communion with the God who is perfect love is a reward, not an obligation. As the psalmist saying, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's by the death and resurrection of Christ and the indwelling of the spirit that this path of life, this fullness of joy is made available to us. But the New Testament and the, the testimony of faithful followers of Jesus over the past two millennia also bear witness to the fact that, that God's Spirit doesn't simply possess us and, and by a sheer force overtake all of our appetites for counterfeit pleasures. No. Like our own marriages with our spouse, our, 
Our union with Christ in salvation is an instant change, like our wedding day was an instant change between you and your spouse. And yet, simultaneously, it is also a lifelong journey of growing, just like the rest of your marriage. So what can we do to move in greater harmony with the rhythms of grace and, and to have our deepest values change, to go on this lifelong journey? We can change our practices of worship. Practices such as singing, prayer, practicing acts of justice and charity, studying scripture, sharing a meal or a meaningful conversation in community, or, or even building reminders into our daily habits of work, family time, and leisure time to, to give thanks to God for those gifts. You know, changing the liturgy of our life to be oriented towards Christ transforms our appetites and affections, making them more Christ-like. So, when we gather as a community on Sunday morning, we gather not only to commune with God and to enjoy community together, but we gather to practice the kinds of practices that produce greater conformation into Christ-likeness so that we would be people who, from Monday through Saturday, would live in more communion with God and community with each other.